Uh, this is John Reddy from the Echo Foundation in Charlotte, North Carolina, and today we will be having a conversation with Laura Taylor. So, Ms. Taylor, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, John, I uh, have been teaching high school English for about 26, 27 years in a few different states, North Carolina and Georgia. So, um, you know, this is kind of a, a new adventure for me teaching online. Yeah. So, what do you think the impact of COVID-19 is on public education? Wow. Um, well, obviously, we've had to kind of change the format that we're learning, and I'm not sure, learning has not stopped, but I'm not sure learning is, has, is as effective as it is when um, you're kind of face-to-face -face and you're yeah. getting information from another person. I think the biggest thing for me is, one, we we maybe need to rethink school a little bit and uh, realize that we work in an environment with a lot of people in close spaces and maybe need to re-examine that. And that there's also, to me, it's exacerbated the difference in what resources kids have. Um, yeah. You know, it, to me, it, 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 is, it is furthering that gap that um, we see. And I, you know me, John, I just don't think that's a good thing if we further that gap. Yeah, for sure. So as a teacher, what has been challenging about teaching through an online platform? Well, you heard that I've been teaching 26 or 27 years. Uh, we did not have this technology 26 or 27 years. So mm -hmm. the biggest challenge for me has been learning. Um, and I feel like I have spent a lot of time learning the technology um, to be effective. And I really, it, it's a good thing because it gives me a perspective from a kid. Like if I'm not engaged yeah. in the lessons that I'm trying to learn and how to use the technology, I you know, I can find a million other things to occupy my time. And I feel like that is the kid's perspective as well. So it's made me kind of rethink what I need to do to be engaging. Um, but, you know, finding space, kind of keeping things quiet, uh, getting into a routine, all those things are challenging for me. And as an adult, I probably have a lot more freedom than a kid does with that. And so I'm sure it's kind of challenging for students as well. Yeah. So what have you been doing to keep students engaged during lessons? Well, um, you know, I'm trying to do like something different tomorrow is I'm actually having like bring your pet to Zoom class today, tomorrow. Um, I just noticed like a lot of kids are kind of showing up sometimes and they'll have a dog or a cat walk through the screen. So yeah. I'm trying to make make it as engaging as possible. And you know, realize that we're all kind of have lives and we have these responsibilities at home, whether they be two-legged or four-legged and, um, you know, maybe trying to connect that way. I think also that um, you have to find a space to work and I've had to yeah. do cleaning and, you know, making sure that people in the background of my house are not spying too much in the background. But, um, yeah. you know, it's just kind of getting on the schedule because everything's different. But, you know... I think the difference between adults and kids is we know that everything is different for a time period and it gets better. Kids have never had to go through anything like this. Yeah. And I can see that it's just like overwhelming, but you kind of realize that that's the ebb and flow is you, you go through it and it gets, it's bad one day and it's better the next and it might be bad and then it's better. And so that's kind of, you know, I think that's the challenge of working at home. If I've had the good and the bad days. Yeah. So speaking of the good and the bad, mm -hmm. outside of work, what have you had struggles with related to COVID-19? Um, earlier, April 7th, we lost my uncle who was in a uh, VA nursing home um, from suspected COVID that was in the nursing home with several positive cases. And, you know, that's a, uh, that's a tough thing to do at any time, but when you cannot mm -hmm. kind of have the access and you have to make decisions like, do I want to expose my older parents, you know, even though this is her last living close relative is, you know, do we need to be there? And uh, we're still kind of waiting on, we were waiting on tests to come back. Uh, the other thing is there's just a lot of differences because of when it happened. Um, we you know, would not have that normal grieving and coming together as a family. Um, we had to kind of change the way that we did the funeral. And he was a Vietnam veteran. And, 
you know, a firefighter, EMT. He spent his entire life, you know, volunteering and helping for other people. Yeah. And it was just kind of sad that he did not kind of get the funeral, maybe, that he would have gotten if times had been different. But um, yeah. you cannot change that. You just have to make the decisions that's kind of best for your family. But that was unfortunate. And that was a tough thing to go through. And it, you know, just realizing that it was just so much tougher on everybody. But, um, mm-hmm. you know, that that was challenging. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. So have there been any surprising positives um, from this? Well, I am actually looking out my window now and every evening it seems like my neighborhood just kind of emerges and everybody's tired of being inside. I have met neighbors that, you know, are down the street and I've never talked with them before, but everybody's just so hungry for human contact that we kind of stay on our sides of the road when we're walking and everybody just kind of goes for a walk and that has been nice to see everybody you kind of have to learn how to love your family again (laughs) yeah we're all so busy and we were all just doing our our thing and obviously we're family and we come together but now you're really coming together and you're really stuck together so you kind of have to learn how to navigate that again and 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 kind of love your family again and i've I've really learned to love my neighbors again because we're always, you know, saying, okay, I'm going out someplace to pick up groceries and I'm, you know, I'm trying to check on the people across the street who are a little older, you know, can I help them? And so those are positives. And then just seeing how, I mean, people appreciate the healthcare workers that have done this their entire lives. And, you know, a lot of my family's in healthcare and and it's scary for us because we've, we've had to make some decisions to stay away just because we know that they're, bringing in germs from the hospitals but um just to see that they're getting their appreciation and, and they want to be there they want to help and yeah yeah that's a that's that's a, a blessing for yeah. everybody else who does not want to be there and help but anyway, yeah those are the positives yes yeah for sure so have you been keeping like how have you been keeping your mental and physical health in check Mental health, I have been learning so much. I mean, and mine is, again, you know, learning the technology and and trying to, you know, learn how to screencast videos and, you know, make up a recording studio in my home and learning how to do these things that I could stand in front of the classroom and do. Um, That has been mentally challenging and frustrating because there have been times where I've been like, oh, my gosh, I cannot do any more of this. And then I've kind of learned that if I do not get out and, you know, move around on that, you know, nightly walk through the neighborhood, I've also kind of added an afternoon walk where I take a lunch break and just kind of, you know, get outside if the weather is nice. Physically, um, I I, I crave that and I need that because I will go and I will go insane. um, Yeah, I will too. Computer all day. I've learned how to ride a bike, which I've not been on in years. That has been That's awesome. Well, yeah, um, you know, just a little bit of a uh, an accident, but it's uh, it's <laughs> yeah, you know that. it's it's going back remember. to those things. And I was like, you know, I'm way too old to like, you know, smiling riding a bike. But there's <laughs> just it's just been fun. Um, yeah. You know, getting out in the middle of the day, and you know, hopefully our kids. I have been telling everybody take care but you know do something every day for your mental health to get out and uh hopefully they've been listening uh because i know i need it yeah i do too i really do too so lastly have you been able to keep in contact with friends and family yeah i mean we've we've had to make a point to uh get in contact with one another um my parents are in their 80s and so i've had to facilitate some facetime meetings with um their their grandkids, um, also their doctors, which has been interesting. But, um, so it's nice because you're kind of making a point. I think it's been actually kind of kind of cute and nice that I have some nieces who are, um, they were a little bored. And so I'm like, all right, just join my class and you can kind of participate in my class. And so that was That's awesome. That was weird or nice that they got to see, you know, me in action. Um, yeah. And then also because I'm a teacher, you know, every relative and neighbor's mm-hmm. like, oh, can you help my kid do this? Can, can you help do this? So that's kind of facilitated, but I know I'm being used, but it's also facilitated some contact with friends and family. Um, 
we had spring break during the middle of all this and you know ooh, spring break 2020 um but i spent it in the backyard and kind of just reconnected with um a lot of people and we just kind of zoomed or facetime one another and um you know shared our stories of all the things that we've been going through so i'm not sure i would have taken the time to do that if, if times were different yeah so that's a good thing obviously it's a lot of free time well this has been a great interview. It's been awesome talking to you, and yeah. Hey John, take care. The Echo Foundation was created by Nobel Peace Laureate Ellie Wiesel and family therapist Stephanie Ansaldo to promote justice, tolerance, and humanity at home and abroad. Based in Charlotte, North Carolina, Echo enlists notable humanitarians to inspire the next generation of humanitarians through student-led initiatives. For more information about the Echo Foundation, visit www.echofoundation.org or follow our Facebook and Instagram pages.